So, after the UK voted for independence, I was very happy indeed. Unfortunately, the media had to crap all over it. The BBC spent the next few days trying to look under every rock on the bottom of the internet for a racist, so they could label the Leave campaign with that. They also looked right into the camera and told the public that the markets had crashed, when they had fallen back to what they were three weeks ago. But not to be too dismissive, the pound is still low and the fall and bounce back wasn't equal for all companies. The UK lost its S&P AAA credit rating, but the other two major rating agencies had downgraded the UK long ago. We'd been on the verge of the S&P measure for quite a while, holding on to it was perhaps more totemic than anything else. Yields on government bonds have fallen, which suggests that investors still have high confidence the UK will not default, which is particularly reassuring given what's happening in America at the moment. In other news, aspects of Project Fear started to collapse. There was no emergency budget, the Bank of England and David Cameron said the economy was fundamentally strong, Western civilization did not end, things started to look the up. The British economy is fundamentally strong, we are highly competitive, and we are open for business. So some market and economic volatility can be expected as this process unfolds. But we are well prepared for this. But you wouldn't have known it from the headlines and social media. Everyone was saying again and again how Votely was racist and about being little Englanders, seeming to completely ignore that Boris Johnson and Daniel Hannum were both not born in the country, they speak fluent French and Spanish and have lived all over the continent, Gisela Stewart was born in Germany, and Pretty Patel has Ugandan parents. Each speech the Vote Leave campaign gave time and time again was about reconnecting with the rest of the world and not being tied into Europe. Now of course racism exists and all racism is wrong, but relentlessly calling the majority of a country racist really does not help unify a country. If anything, it encourages the racists that do exist. Instead of focusing on the shared positives of Brexit, like us pursuing new trade deals, we had massively divisive stories being run. It was this region versus that region, and the old versus the young. Evidently older people in the country, instead of being respected and listened to, were all branded as stupid racists, who should have their votes taken away. Talking of bullying the elderly, the Labour Party firmly rounded on Jeremy, friends with Hamas, Corbyn, in an overly brutal way. 172 MPs voted against him in a vote of no confidence. While I completely disagree with his policies, he was elected by the Labour Party members to lead his party. I actually started feeling a bit sorry for the guy. When Jess Phillips questions your competence and the whole room doesn't start laughing, that's got to hurt. If things couldn't get any worse for Corbyn, Thursday was the release day of the review of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, undertaken by a Labour Party member, by the way. Not only did the report make no reference to Jeremy Corbyn saying he was friends with Hamas. Our friends from Hezbollah are obviously, will be speaking. I'd also invited um, friends from Hamas to come and speak as well. An organisation that has written into its constitution that it wants to kill all Jews, but the review recommended that anti-Semites should not be permanently banned from the party, instead recommending a greater use of short suspensions, and that there should be no further checks into what any member may have said in the past. At the event, Corbyn used a very ill-advised choice of words, kind of comparing Israel to ISIS, and a Jewish MP also claimed she was subject to anti-Semitic abuse by a member of Momentum. At time of writing, Jeremy is hanging on and is looking likely to have a contested election against Angela Eagle. Conservative Party leadership race is also in full swing, but I'll do a separate video on that as well as one on Scottish independence later. While all this was going on, the EU has said that we would only be given access to the single market if we accepted free movement of people, i.e. basically the standard EEA arrangements. In my opinion, that would be an acceptable outcome. According to the two polls I've seen, only a third of Leave voters had immigration as their leading issue, so assuming the others, like myself, would be okay compromising on that, such an arrangement would see an approval rating of 83%. If, over the next two plus years, we manage to get any concessions on free movement, that rating could go even higher. All in all, a pretty good place to start negotiations from. Phew, what a week. Well, at least politics isn't boring anymore.